All right. Hello. Let's see what I've got cooking over here. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Pixie. Hello. Hello, Miha. Hi, darling. Hi, Jill. Hi. So, listen, folks, ladies, madams, queens, if you are joining on Zoom, I am requesting that my Zoom attendees are active participants. You're really great. You've got all your props. If you're like, I got to make dinner or I've got to drive somewhere, come join us in the Facebook group so you can be like kind of a passive participant. Um, so I'll oh, get my Facebook live started. And we'll get going here in just a second. I am a uh, solo shop running tonight. My assistant's out. So let me meet you guys so we can. Uh, Avoid any background noise. Hello, Nicole, Lynn, hey woman. Deb, what's up? Jennifer, gorgeous, Rose, hi. Oh my gosh, okay, and then I'm gonna go to the next page over here. Okay, so all of you on Zoom, please unmute your video if you, um, if you feel safe and comfortable unmuting your video. I would love to see the sea of white out there, white clothing, honoring the return of the sun. Um, hey, Facebook Live, how's it going? Hi. <laughs> it's a little uh, dual action over here and I'll be doing my very best to make sure that everybody's seen, loved up on. Um, but if you're joining by Zoom and you're kind of doing other stuff, jump on over to the Facebook Live so that you can you know, be a passive participant. And I welcome all of you who are joining on Zoom to, um, and if you're on Facebook Live and you wanna be an active participant, you're wearing your white and you've got all of your props, come join us on Zoom. Um, well, it'll shake, it'll shake down however it does. Um, okay, Jill Thompson, thank you for sharing your screen. However, we would appreciate it if you would not do that. Oh, okay. Let's see. Can you find your down at the bottom under share screen? Yeah, can you put that? I've lost my whole entire, let's see. I don't know what I'm doing now. And so tonight's presentation or tonight's training call, tonight's activation ritual is to support you and, and me quite frankly, because we all need this work in transitioning out of this year and into the new, out of the autumn and into the winter and into that place of infinite possibility. Okay. So if you've been joining me for a while, if you've been following my work, you know that I love to create a space for grounding with three deep breaths. So if it's available to you now, I invite you to bring a hand over your heart. And in that practice alone, we're looking for several things. You're looking for your own heartbeat. Can you find it? If not, that's okay. You're feeling for the warmth of your skin. Even, even through your clothing is fine. But just feeling that physical touch, that connection, that reminder that you're an organic animal, human being. You're a mammal. You live, you breathe, you eat, you sleep, you eliminate, you hydrate, you you know, we have biological drivers. So let this touch be that connection to your humanity, to your human self. I invite you to close your eyes if that's available to you. And in closing our eyes, all of our other senses are heightened. And with this practice, we'll be calling ourselves back to the present moment, okay? Wherever we've been today, whomever we've been speaking with or engaging with, and whatever fantasies we've had in our head, if you've been thinking about the future or ruminating on the past, we're taking this moment to call yourself back from all people, all places, and all times. We'll do that with three deep breaths and I will join you. So here we go. Let out all the air, exhale, exhale, exhale in preparation for breath number one. Breathing in through the nose. Keep going, keep going, keep going, big, big, big. And then exhaling out through your mouth. 
Keep going, keep going, exhale. Exhaust that exhale, push out more air than you thought you brought in, and then bring it back in. Feel how the breath just naturally fills. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then a big exhale, <sighs> pushing out worry, concern, the day, your mom, whatever it is. And then another breath in, inhaling in through the nose, breathing in light, possibility, infiniteness, expansion, and a big old exhale, <sighs> feeling the root of your seat, the length of your spine. Just find a moment for gratitude for this moment right now. We move so quickly through this life. With the advances of technology, increasing responsibilities, full plates, full lives, it often eats away at our time for ourselves. Our daily practices, our loving solitude, our reflection, gratitude, and quiet states of being. So thank yourself for gifting yourself this moment, for taking time out of your to-do list, out of your holiday preparations, so that you grow your roots of grounding a little bit deeper, sow your seeds of intention with care, and consciously turn the page of another season of your blessed life. One more big breath in. And a big exhale out. Beautiful. And you can open your eyes back up and come on back. And from this space, I want you to set your intention. I want you to conjure what this moment means to you and what you are wanting to create in this space of grounding, of intention, of calling in, of clearing, releasing. What is it that you are hoping to? not only get out of, but also put into this sacred ritual that we're sharing tonight. And write that down. Just take a moment. And if you're joining on the replay, the same invitation stands. What is your intention for carving out this time for yourself, whether you're watching this later tonight, tomorrow, next week, after the first of the year? It's all perfect. What is your intention in this moment? Beautiful. I'll give you another 20 seconds for that. Great. Awesome. All right, so from this place, I wanna just share with you briefly why this solstice call has become a thing. I don't know why it's become a thing. It's become a thing for me because transition and ritual is important in my life and I recognize that I personally don't always create the time and space for it. And so there's a little bit of selfishness in creating this opportunity for you is because it literally forces me to do these practices for myself and to honor this transition for myself. So thanks for playing along. Thanks for joining. But even more so, right, we're like going back to that idea of, you know, we are creatures of the earth. We came from, well, I won't get into that because we all have, we might have a, a lot of different opinions about that. But the truth of the fact is that we are animal beings. We are organic, you know, life forms. And once upon a time, we as a, a human species, we followed the seasons and the time and then the natural rhythms of the earth to gain meaning and to um, create create new possibilities and move into, you know, we, we, we're guided by the shift in the seasons. So, and what the solstice is, right? The solstice, we're on the, the edge of the winter solstice. It's actually tomorrow. 
Um, and it also happens to be the anniversary of the date that my man and I signed our, wed our, our marriage papers. So there's another reason why I like to do this celebration is because it's in some way like an honoring of, of the love that I have and, and a, a, a sharing of that with you. Um, but the winter solstice is, is lauded as like the beginning of the solar year. And it, at, at the same token, it is the darkest night of the year. I mean, y'all know that the sun is setting up here in the Northern Hemisphere at like 4.30 at night. You're like, what? <laughs> you know, because six months ago, it was out until what, 9, 9.30? So, or depending, of course, where you are in the world. Um, so it, it being the darkest night of the year, you know, in, in the celestial path, it's, you know, the ancient people would see the sun slow down and almost stop. Right. And that's where the word solstice comes from. Um, at the same time, it is also it marks the return of the sun because December 22nd, ladies and, and my distinguished gentlemen on the line. This our days begin to grow longer beginning December 20, 22nd. So it is, you know, we're 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 moving into that dark time, but then overnight we're on that flip side, we're on that, that return. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Just futzing with my settings here. Um, so what, what I, what I like to, what I tend to bring to this is like an ending, um, almost like the end of the year, like that, like this is new year's Eve or tomorrow might is new year's Eve, you know? Um, because then there's really just that little sliver of time between the actual end of the calendar year. So we can, we can approach this as a fresh beginning, you know, not just an ending, but a fresh new start. Okay. Um, and what's beautiful about the shift in the seasons and the solstice itself is that, you know, again, coming back to that idea of like, we're, we're sort of forced into darkness. We're forced into being inside and, you know, but without the darkness, we we don't have the same appreciation for the light you know we don't have that contrast so there's an honoring there's a real celebration for the darkness because it is just as important as the light because without darkness there, there's nothing to illuminate okay so just super special super um super sacred in my book in the book of mexico and for me, it's also a beautiful remembrance, a reminder that we are part of a larger order, you know, that, that, that our life moves in cycles and that we're always renewing and changing. We're always releasing and calling in. And if you've ever created something in your life, there's, there's a letting go. There has to be a death of some sort in order to create a rebirth or in order to, there's, there has to be a letting go, a releasing in order to have a big calling in. Okay. And we, we can start that process with, with our stories and, and how we authentically like think about ourselves. And I'll share with you a quick story because it was, it was only just recently reflected back to me how powerful this piece was on my journey to love. Um, you know, I actually sent an email out about it yesterday and it, the, the subject line was something like, I thought my life was falling apart. And it's so true. You know, there was this moment and this is, um, like six or seven years ago, right before I met my husband, Nick, and there was so much that was slipping through my fingers. I, you know, I mentioned in that email that I had been hired to do hired to be part of this cast to do this showcase performance we were being considered to be the 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 house act for this this new hot nightclub that was going to open up and if we got that gig that meant like five solid nights a week of steady artistic work in new york and at that time for me that was that was like the pinnacle of what i was trying to do like i was trying to make it as a performer I was also teaching Pilates and personal training and I did love that work, but I had to get up at five 30 in the morning to go teach at 6 AM. And I'm like, let me hang out at night. Cause that's where I belong. Okay. So that was, you know, that was happening. And I had this, 
this friend that I was dating and we had met like back in November and we had this magical like November, December, it began with a cheek touch, you know, I mean, it was so like, he was so, uh, like I called him the inter international man of elegance because he was Persian and he was very educated and he just had this way about him that was so sexy, but like not in like a, a, bo a, a boastful way, but a very quiet, sexy, intelligent, um, you know, and, and he was very into consciousness and very into the capacity of the brain. He was studying neuroscience. So I was told you guys, I was totally like, digging this guy, right? And on top of that, he was part of this friend circle that I really loved, but always kind of felt like a little peripheral on. And I felt like with him, I'm in, I'm in the cool kid crowd. Like I'm, you know? And um, so moving into December, I, my brother was getting married in California. I was living in New York and I invited this guy to be my date to this wedding. And he was like, yeah, no, I can't do that. And I justified it, justified it, justified it. And I was invited to another wedding in March in Mexico. And I'm like, invited him to be my date. And he, no, I can't go. I, I'm, I got to dissertate for my PhD. I've got to find job. Like, and I justified and justified. And then finally I was like, F this. <laughs> I'm going to like this really amazing epic wedding in Mexico with like at least 30 people you know like what's wrong, you know? And I had this like, this moment of like, man, I know that somebody, the right guy would be so jazzed to be with me on this journey, not just the weddings, but like, I'm a BFD. You know, that was my, my thing back then was like, I'm a BFD and somebody would just be so stoked to be with me. So I had this turning point. I had this decision to make. And, and the decision was, Do I want to stay in this thing that, that I really dig this guy, but it's just not like, but I'm still wishing it were something different. Cause I had the conversation with him. Can we, you know, I'd love to move this forward. And he, no, I can't, I, th this is still my priority. You know, so it was very clear that he wasn't budging. So it was like, do I, do I just trust that there is that somebody out there that would totally be in alignment with going to Mexico and doing the thing? Or do I like just stay in it and, and wish it were something different? You know, and for me, that just wasn't an option because I knew it would, I just knew it would never change. So I had to, I had to break up with him. I had to, and, and that's where my practice of releasing with blessing came from. And, and my, my, and, and because all of my breakups previously had been dumpster fires, right. And I've spoken into that a little bit. Um, but this one was so, like cool it was okay you know i mean he wasn't like thrilled he's like you know we could still and i'm like but no we can't you know um but for me it was a feeling of like wow i really stood in my power i really stood for the vision that i have for love in my life and for me it felt like that wasn't the that wasn't a dumpster fire breakup that was that was actually okay and and for any of you out there who might have a breakup close at hand or recently behind you, you know, I have this, this thought, this vision that came from that moment that, you know, I, I, I coached myself that the easier my breakups get, the closer I am to never having one again. I want you to write that down. The easier my breakups get, the closer I am to never having one again. You on Facebook too, write that down. Hey Liz, Liz and Elizabeth, hi. Got all my people on Facebook. Regina, hey, Adriana, Catherine, Shannon, Annie, welcome back, awesome. Okay, and then the, <laughs> the performance, which was a volunteer gig, by the way, I put in hours of rehearsal time. I told the director like way up front, I can't go until one and two in the morning for rehearsals because I have to get up at five to go teach Pilates. I got a day job. So she was cool with that. And then the day of the show, we were supposed to showcase that night. I get this email, you know, based on who was and wasn't at rehearsal last night, who, if you didn't make it, then you don't need to come to the showcase tonight. You're out. 
And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Are you kidding? Like, and that was a total flip the table, walk out of the restaurant moment, like, and set the restaurant on fire. I was not, I didn't have the skills or the tools to handle my anger very well. So she heard about like where I was, you know, but 24 hours later, I had time to calm down. And what I was recognizing was that, gosh, even that performance was a stretch. Like I was, the, I, I will humbly say, I was the hula hoop queen of New York at the time. And I was, you know, dressing up in like circus chic and very clown, like, you know, clown couture is what I would call it. And she had me in a role that was like in uh, pasties and fishnets and like, um, you know, uh, booty shorts and tying people up and whipping people. And, and I'm like, I'm a performer. I can stretch. I can, you know, but when, you know, after I came down from being cut, I was like, shoot, you know, that really wasn't in alignment with my creativity and who I want to be as an artist. And so after, you know, after some pain, of course, I did get to that point of releasing and just recognizing what I want to create is so much different. And that's what I did. I, 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 I like, I released it and I said, okay, you know what? That show wasn't, that show wasn't meant for me and I'm going to be okay with that. What do I want to create? Who do I want to be as a performer? And I, I looked back in my email, you guys, to see what the turnaround time on this was. It was three hours after I got cut from the show. I got another email from a Pilates client of mine who was also a roller derby girl. And she asked me if I would do a 15 minute roller derby halftime show at the Gotham Girls roller derby game. She gave me a couple of dates. And I was, and that was three hours. And the reason why that blows my mind is because that roller derby halftime show, I was like, well, 15 minutes, I'm not going to do that by myself, gather up my girls. And then one of my girls is like, oh, Gotham girls roller derby. That's a big deal. Are we doing choreography or are we just winging it? We can't wing that. And so now I'm like, oh my God, now I've got to make choreography. And I made this 10 minute piece, right? I did, like in a matter of less than a week. I pulled two songs off of iTunes. I put them together. I'm writing up the lyrics. I'm laughing because the way that the lyrics of the two songs work out together, it's a love story. And here I am. I just broke up with this Mr. 80% guy and I'm laughing. I'm like, this is okay. Sure. Whatever. We do the halftime show. One of the girls got sick. So, and half of us forgot the choreography. So then it was over and it was like, Oh, Oh, uh, but now I have this piece of choreography. What do I do with it? And there's this arts festival that I was really close with and involved with in New York on Governor's Island. It happens every summer. It's called Figment. It's in 18 different cities around the world. So you can find one probably near you. And I had this moment. I was out on a run and I was like, oh my God, I bring the show to Figment and I double the number of performers. I triple it. I'm going to make a dance for an infinite number of hula hoopers. And that is an example of, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh, but I'm going to give you my senior high school yearbook quote. All right. This is the way my brain thought when I was 17 years old. Little ideas that tickle and nag should never be ignored because in them lie the seeds of destiny. I'm going to say it again. I'll drop it in the chat window or I'll throw it up in the Facebook group, but I'll say it again. You don't have to write it down so ferociously. I just want you to hear it. I want it to land. Little ideas that tickle and nag should never be ignored for in them lie the seeds of destiny. I pulled that from Babe the Gallant Pig. Okay. It's a freaking children's movie, but it's a great movie. And the reason why I'm sharing that quote with you, the reason why I'm sharing this whole story with you is because that dance is honestly what I believe to be the blueprint for my love life. Because as I was rehearsing my 50 dancers and as I was, you know, like ordering, like as I was, I mean, doing all the things, like I made choreography on video, I did all the spreadsheets and, you know, it's coordinating 50 people is no, no small feat, right? But as I was doing all of that stuff, I got a message on my online dating profile. Hey, 
I like your spirit and your energy, and I'd like to get to know it better. And for those of you who are online dating, you know that that's a pretty high quality message to receive. Okay. And fast forward to less than a month later, I'm meeting up with this guy. He's really, really good looking. He's high quality, got his shit in order. He's got vision. And he's asking me about my show. And he's asking me if anybody is lined up to shoot it, to, you know, record it. And I say, no, are you, at, are you offering? And yes, he was. And nine days later, three, day, three four dates and nine days later, we're at the show. He's shooting it. And I'm dancing it with my 50 people. And I'm hearing the music as if for the first time. And I'm uh, like, I nearly fell over because I'm hearing the love story and recognizing that this is exactly what is happening in my life. I wrote my own love story. Okay. So the reason why I'm sharing all of that is because if I hadn't let go of Mr. 80%, if I had just been like, no, I just think he, you know, once he gets through his dissertation, once he gets his PhD, once he gets a new job, come on. Am I, are you really going to wait until this, until that, until this, until for your happiness? I had to release him. I had to just say, you know what? I fucking love you, but you're not my guy. And I remember like staying up until three, four in the morning, a couple of nights in the row, just like weeping about this. Not, not really about him though, but because he wasn't it. And here I am. I got to get out there again. You know, I know you've been there. Let me just get a smile and nod. If you guys are with me, little hearts on that Facebook, uh, live, just press the hearts. If you, um, live viewers. Okay. Those of you on Facebook, give me some love. Give me some love. <laughs> press the hearts like it's your job. Okay. Um, yes. All right. And I'll just check in really quickly on the la the, the chat here. Great. You guys are with me. I love it. The reason, so I had to release Mr. 80% and I had to let go of that performing opportunity in order to make space for this show, which ended up being the story of my love life, which then one year later, I reprised the piece with 100 people and then came back and did the show two more times. That fourth time, this extraordinary man, who's now my husband, came in and crashed the ending, getting down on one knee and asking me to share his life with him. How dare he? <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But if, you're, if you wanna see that, there's a video of that because it was a performance and I had all my photographers and all my videographers lined up, but that's on, um, my, my website, expertincoaching.com. I forgot which page it's on, but fish around. There's not many pages there. Um, and you can find it uh, and watch it and grab your tissues because it's really amazing. Um, and the other thing I just want to plug in here real quick is um, on my Facebook coaching page, Bexpert and Coaching, um, beginning in February, I am going to Facebook Live every day with like, landmarks and lessons from my journey to love from the dumpster fire breakups to the releasing with blessing to how I met Nick and then how I fell in love with him and then how I knew he was my person. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through that day by day by day leading up to Valentine's day and then all the way through the month of February. All right. You'll hear about it. So just tuck it in your brain for now. Not that you have to tune into every single one, but just trust that the one that you tune into is the one that you need to hear. Okay. So we've got to release. We've got to let go. We've got to allow a death to happen in order to create, in order to birth anew. All right. Um, I can't say it enough. Like it's, it's painful. It's uncomfortable. We don't want to do it. We're human again, change. Oh, <laughs> right. Sometimes. At the same time, think about, now just for a moment, play with me. Think about, think about one or two of the most amazing things that have come into your life. You know, for some of you who are parents, that would be your, your children. You know, for some of you who have gotten out of a sticky situation, that would be your new life or the new possibility that you 
believed in and made happen. And in order to achieve or create those beautiful, incredible things, just think back to before it was a reality in your life. Think back to what you had to recognize, what you had to be aware of, what you had to accept, and what you had to let go of, what you had to sacrifice. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I know that being a parent, there's a lot of sacrifice. I know that, I mean, for me, I left a beloved city. I, I loved living in New York until I didn't. <laughs> no, but I mean, but even still, leaving was really challenging. You know, and I still mourn that loss. I still mourn the loss of, you know, gathering 100 hula hoopers and glittery, spirally, twisty. You know, I, I, I mourn that at the same time. What I have today is you, bright, beautiful, beaming souls from across the planet joining me to celebrate the return of the sun and the darkest night. So, I mean, blessed does not even cover it. You know, and of course, maybe there will be one day where we're all together and I'm getting you all the hula hoop. Who knows? I don't know. Release, okay? So in order to release, I, you know, we, we did our grounding breath at the same time, being that it is the shift in the seasons, I want to create a really powerful space for transformation. And I'm, I'm evoking a shamanic practice that um, might be new to some of you. Some of you might be like, oh, well, you're doing it wrong. So <laughs> let's, um, <laughs> the reason why I say that is because this is, not, um, this is not something that I do regularly in my practice, but I feel so connected with the earth and with all of you when I do. So that's why I've got you um, with your, your items. Okay, so we're going to call in the four directions, all right? And this, again, is a shamanic practice, or what I like to refer to as an earth-centric earth -centric celebration, an earth-honoring, an earth honoring, okay? And not only for the earth, but also our humanity, okay? Being human. It helps us move from being separate to being connected, not only, again, with the, the earth, but also each other, and it gives us a space for gratitude for the seasons, for the rhythms of nature. And it also celebrates the life force that is the source of the transformation of seasons, the transitions, the, 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 the force that grows the leaves, the force that creates the snow. You know, it's, it's the force that, you know, and maybe we're celebrating gravity tonight. I don't, I don't, you know, but I believe that there is a force that is greater than us that brings us all, unifies us all in one energy. So we're going to bring back to center so that you can be your authentic self and your grounded being as we move through that, that release practice that I'll guide you through. Okay. So the very first direction that we're calling in is the east. We start with the direction of the east. That is where the sun rises. So I want you to grab your feather. The east represents the springtime. Oh my God, look at those feathers. I love it. Good. Hold your feather up to your heart or near your camera so I can see them. Oh, I got a lot of striped feathers too. Beautiful. I love it. Peacock feather. Oh, and a little tiny sparrow feather. Fabulous. Excellent. So our feather represents the east and we call upon the sunrise. If you want, you can place a hand over your heart. You can drop with eyes closed whatever you feel called to. Most importantly right now, you're just staying connected with my words. So we're calling upon the sunrise, the beginning of the day, the dawn's early light. We call upon new beginnings, the cycle of the new moon, the calendar year, our feminine bodies. We call upon the winds that bring about clarity, the winds that bring about change, the breath of life, the, the, the force that breathes life through us, the beginning of life itself, the space of innocence, youthful play and childhood, space of being mindful, the place where dreams take action. We can call upon our winged friends, the hawk. I've got a little hawk feather here, the egret, has been one of my guides for many, many years. 
the sparrow and all those who travel upon the wind. We call upon the east. So we're just gonna raise this either to our heart or to our third eye. And then we can place our feather off in front of you, slightly off to the right. So with our items, we're gonna be drawing sort of a, a compass, all right? So that feather is gonna go slightly in front of you off to the right, as if you were looking at a map where the east would fall. Beautiful. And then moving around the compass, we move to the south and the south representing summer and the heat. So we're gonna take our candle and I have my very special star candle holder and a fresh new candle. And I invite you to light the candle with me. And hold it to your heart for a moment. Ah, oh, so beautiful. Beautiful. I'm calling in the south. I call upon the fire, the summer, the heat of summer, the midday time where the sun is at the highest. We call in the place of passion, creation, and inspiration the spark of life, the fire within. We call in abundance, ripeness of the gardens, vitality in our hearts and in our bodies, a maturity in our desires. We call in dance and we call in the sun. And our fire here gets a little special extra recognition because it is a very sacred part of our ceremony because the flame in front of us right now represents is a tiny spark of the sun, which we're gathered to honor tonight. And fire, in addition to that, is also the element which changes matter from one form to another faster than any other. And for those of you who are in Southern California or any other fire affected areas, my heart goes out to you. And I have a quick fire blessing. So we'll just hold this fire to our heart for one more moment. Close your eyes, take a breath. We use this fire tonight to transform that in your life, which you are ready to transform, to release that which you are ready to release and to create a space for new things to come to you. Your life will never be the same. May this night create space for bright, beautiful blessings in your life. And now we place this flame, this candle, directly in front of you, as if, again, coming around the compass, you're placing it in the position of the south. <laughs> Great. And if you're joining on Zoom, just double check that your audio is muted. It looks like everybody is, but just a double, a quick double check would be great. Oh, beautiful. Hi, everybody. Okay. Coming back to my front page. All right. So, and now we're going around the compass and honoring and calling in the West. So find your glass of water, works on a couple of levels. Let's all drink. <laughs> Let's get hydrated. <laughs> mm. Excellent. So this water is to hydrate you through this training call, this ritual call. It is also to honor and call in the West. So hold your glass of water to your heart for a moment. And in the West, we're calling upon the setting sun. We're calling upon the dusk, the golden magic hour before she sleeps under the horizon. We're calling upon the release of the leaves from the trees, the endings and certain death that we can see ahead. We welcome the letting go. We call in the elements of the unknown, the hidden mysteries in life. The deeper, workings of going, the deeper workings going on beyond our perception and awareness, the unconscious. We call upon the feminine, the fluid, our emotional selves, the moon, 
the allowing what is. And calling on the West, it is an honoring of the wisdom that comes with aging, the maturity, the knowing, that, that sense of being seasoned. <laughs> And we also call on the power of release of control and going with the flow. Let's take a sip of water again. Excellent. And you're welcome to return to that water at any point you need. And now we'll place that in the position of the west. So slightly in front of you, off to the left. Okay, and moving around the compass, we come to the north. And here I've asked you to bring a piece of the earth, either a rock, a precious stone, a crystal. Hold it up. Let me see it. Yes, beautiful. Oh, I love it. Actually, Pixie, I've got one of those too, a little rose quartz heart. <laughs> and then my heart is from the Death Valley National Park Desert. I have a thing for heart rocks. You guys, your hearts are amazing. Hold it to your heart. And calling upon the energies of the north, the midnight time of quiet and stillness. We invite the darkness of winter and the quiet turning inward. We release that which lies behind us in favor of slumber, stillness, and rest. We call upon the energies of our ancestors, the spirit of abundance and prosperity, and open a space for grounding being of the earth. We evoke the power of our intuition, our deep authentic knowing, the voice, that still small voice that guides us home. And then if it is safe and sanitary, I invite you to kiss your rock and place it in front of you a little further out, taking that position of the north. We love you, Mama Earth. And now we bring ourselves into the space by calling in, there's three more energies and we'll be moving through these quickly, but to call in the four directions without these, I feel a little incomplete. So we honor the above, great sky spirit to the heavens. I've got my little celebration of my celestial, this represents the celestial bodies, the angels, the stars above, to our great spirit guides, the ancestors, those who came before us, to the collective consciousness of humankind, how we as humanity come together and live and breathe. God, great spirit angels, and cosmic guides, we honor you. And I'll set my above over here. And the below, we honor our sacred mother earth, the ground beneath us, our collective history on this planet, the collective suffering, the collective joys and triumphs, our ancestors, our ancestral line, our lineage, our mothers, our grandmothers, our great grandmothers, our fathers, our grandfathers, our great grandfathers, the shadow self, the parts unseen, the depths of the underworld, the blood of the womb, and our sacred feminine cycle. And then finally, our center. In the center, we call in, we evoke the place of balance. Our center is the place of balance. And here, I'm representing the center with my brand new hand-blown glass heart it was gifted to me yesterday by my extraordinary man. He made this with his own two hands. Where did he come from, you guys? He's amazing. That kind of love is possible. Representing the center, the place of balance, sacred union, inclusivity, belonging, oneness, wholeness, yin and yang, divine feminine, divine masculine, the rainbow, all colors, the present moment, all right? Let's take a breath together. <sighs> Knowing that our angels, our spirits, our guides, even the iteration of who we are becoming, our highest self is with us tonight. We have just 
open the doors for all of them to join us. And they're with us to help create magic and to fertilize the seeds of what we're planting tonight. Okay. Now with our candles burning blight brightly and the angels and spirits and ancestors and guides with us, we now shift into our deep practice of release, letting go, making space for those bright, beautiful blessings and calling in. And tonight we're doing this through the sacred Hawaiian practice of Ho'oponopono. And some of you might already be familiar with that practice. And for those of you who are not, it is uh, the, the Huna way. And Huna means like the ancient Hawaiian shaman traditions. And it is a sacred practice of Hawaii and the Hawaiian spiritual leaders. And literally translated Ho'oponopono, I'll write it in the chat window so you guys know it is <laughs> spelled that way, ho, oponopono. And it literally translates to to make right and to make right with the ancestors or make right with the people um, whom you have relationships with, to make right with yourself. It works on many levels, which is why I'm so excited that this is our practice tonight. It has the power to shift the energy within yourself. It has the sh power to shift the energy between you and another person. It has the power to shift the energy on the planet. Um, I could go into Dr. Hugh Len and uh, his teacher quite deeply, but if you want to learn more about the lineage and the, 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 the sacredness and the history of Ho'oponopono, you can do that after this call or at your leisure. I want to get into like the practice of it. Um, at the same time, I also do want to honor the Hawaiian ancestors who, um, and Dr. Hugh Len, who's brought this to a global platform. Um, essentially, it helps us connect with our heart and our soul. It raises our consciousness. It shifts our frequency instantly. Um, and then that shift in our frequency vibrates outward beyond us and has the potential to heal the collective consciousness. I know I'm making big, bold promises here, and there are tested um, and, and documented evidences of this practice in motion. So it works. It's based on the theory that all life is connected. You are in me and I am in you. And that is a, that's a, a quote from Dr. Hugh Len, who is, again, the man who's widely credited for propelling the practice into our, uh, our world today. And it operates under four simple concepts. These are four different energies that act like tuning forks to tune the parts of ourselves into harmony. You know, and if you join me on my, my Tune Up Tuesday, I'm always talking about, I'm here to support you in tuning your heart to the frequency of love. You know, there, there are other studies that talk about our heart is one of the most powerful parts of our body. The magnetic field that our heart produces is some number many times greater, more powerful than the magnetic field of our brain. And the magnetic waves that our heartbeat produces are measurable. And that has a, a visual frequency. And that frequency is palpable and noticeable to other human beings. I mean, how many times have you been in a conversation with somebody that you're just jiving with and riffing off of and you're feeling like, man, have we met before? I feel like I've known you forever. And then maybe you're at a party or a networking event and a third person comes up and you can feel the shift in the field. It's like, whoa. They're not operating on the same frequency. You know, we've all been there. So this, this idea of tuning our heart to the frequency of love is, is, is like, I mean, there's, there's, there's evidence here. And what I love about Ho'oponopono is all four of these energies tune us to the highest vibration, to love. So those four energies are repentance, forgiveness, gratitude, and love. And just uh, a quick note, if you do have the uh, workbook, the follow along downloadable workbook close at hand, um, those are written out there, okay? So those of you joining on Facebook, that's in a downloadable link lower in the feed. Those of you on Zoom, you can find it in the chat. So repentance, forgiveness, gratitude, and love, four energies that vibrate at the highest 
frequency. And again, this can be applied on ourselves. Somebody that we struggle with, we don't even have to speak the words to them, but we can use this practice with them in mind. Um, it can work on the wounds of the world. We can also send this out to somebody we love. Like it doesn't have to be somebody that we have to mend or heal the relationship with. You know, we can practice this on ourselves or somebody else when we want to cultivate even more love. Okay. And the words that we use, it goes like this. It's very simple. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Now, different teachers will teach different orders. Um, so it might show up on a YouTube video. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you. Thank you. It, so if that shows up and, you know, um, my invitation is to work with the order that works for you. I love this order. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And to practice Ho'oponopono, we say these four lines in repetition. And if you want, you can switch up the order, like I said. And we're just going to, we're going to spend the next 15 or 20 minutes or so digging into the, each energy and specific practices that you can use that help you tune that energy within yourself. Okay. So the first energy of Ho'oponopono is repentance. And we use the words, I'm sorry. And the questions that I have, you know, and, and in many practices, like Tonglin, for example, the Buddhist practice of Tonglin, if you're a fan of Pema Chodron, you know Tonglin. Um, but we begin with ourself before we move out to another or the world. So my recommendation, my invitation is to begin these practices, these questions within yourself before reflecting on your relationship with another person. So in the repentance energy uh, and the words, I'm sorry, you know, check in with yourself and ask yourself, are you holding any resentment or judgment towards yourself? Do you feel as though you've let yourself down in any way? Maybe you are going to pay more attention to your love life this year, or you are going to improve your relationship with your family, or maybe you were going to move or get a different job and none of that really gelled or came together. And now it's like at the end of another year and who knows where your mind is going. So check in for a moment. Is there anything that you're holding against yourself? Is there something that you wished that you had achieved this year that you failed? And if anything is sparking, as I'm telling, as I'm talking, feel free to write down notes. Um, the follow along workbook does have a lot of these questions as well. So you're welcome to follow along, write things down as I'm presenting, as I'm talking. If anything really feels hot with electricity, drop it in the chat window, drop it in the chat window. I love to hear what's coming up for you. This is a safe space. The chat window goes away when this meeting ends. So when I post the recording, nobody will see what you're sharing. So I want you to feel safe knowing that whatever is coming up for you right now is perfect. It's divine because we get to release it. It's coming up for a reason. All right. So I'm sorry. Where do I hold myself in judgment? Where do I hold myself in contempt or at fault? Good, I see somebody says that she feels at peace with herself, beautiful. I'm sorry I wasn't true to myself this year. I haven't saved up the money that I, I wanted to for my new car, my new home, and to do the things that I, I wanted to do. I haven't, I haven't achieved what I set out to achieve. These feelings are so real. I have them too. I have them too. You know, that amazing man that asked me to marry him and we signed our papers three years ago. We still haven't had a wedding. <laughs> we've been, we've been, doing other stuff, <laughs> you 
you know, and there's, there's always this feeling of, man, it's been three years now. When's that going to happen? You know? So notice if there's, if there's sorrow, if you're, if you're holding anything against yourself, are you, are you holding any contempt or judgment for, for not doing differently for learning a lesson and then doing the same thing over again? Oh crap. I had to learn that lesson again. Holding yourself in contempt for not doing more, not being more. Yeah. Still making the same mistakes in relationships. I hear that. I hear that was an awesome year. Great. Haven't found meaningful work in the world. Yeah. These are all very, very real. So with a hand on your heart, we're going to repeat the four lines. You can say them out loud. All the lines are muted, or you can just soak them in. Okay, we're just going to say it once. At the end, we'll say it in repetition. And exhale to begin. And inhale to prepare. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. One more time. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Beautiful. The second energy of Ho'oponopono is forgiveness. I'm getting goosebumps. We use the words, please forgive me. And we might need to be forgiven. We might need to forgive others. Please forgive me works on both levels. Please forgive me acknowledges the desire for forgiveness, the desire for release and letting go. You know, if you are holding contempt against yourself or another, if you're holding a grudge against somebody who did you wrong, betrayed you, transgressions, who's the one really suffering? Us. Yeah. And so forgiveness is not about that other person. It's about, it's about the self. It's about freeing ourselves from the prison, from the poison of judgment, of holding a grudge. Now, forgiveness, right, is not about making it okay, but forgiveness is about separating the person from the deed, from the act, and allowing that person to be human. Please forgive me. It makes the same request of myself. Please forgive me. It acknowledges our humanity, our divine, perfect imperfection. <laughs> You screw up, yay, you win the human award. You're doing it right. <laughs> Falling is part of, part of it. Uh, Rising Strong is a beautiful book, if you haven't read, by Brené Brown. Gah, so good. If you're on a dating journey, a conscious dating journey, and you're calling in your person, Rising Strong is a beautiful book to read. It's about being in the arena, which just means like, taking on life and doing the thing and getting out of your comfort zone and risking as Brené so eloquently talks about and then falling down like we do and then brushing ourselves back off and getting back up and getting out there. We're perfect in our imperfection. And please forgive me releases that need for perfection, that need to be right all the time. Perfection is soft loving, kind. We're doing the best that we can with the skills and tools that we have at any given time. How many times do we have to remind ourselves that about somebody in our life that is a consistent challenge? That's a really good one to come back to. They're doing their best with the skills and tools that they have in the moment. You know, Forgiveness is a time to release. Yeah, thank you, James. 
Forgiveness also releases the stifling ego, absolutely. And allows that other person to be human, allows us to be human. And it allows us the, the release of the negative to find freedom, to find freedom and reclaim what brings us joy. Again, if we, if we think about that death and rebirth cycle, if we can release the, 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 the negativity, the chains, the burdensome, the heaviness of grudge, like guilt, grudge, resentment, all of that, the freedom that we get in return is the rebirth. Freedom. Something has to die in the space of forgiveness. And just piggybacking on James's comment here, sometimes that's our ego. So what are you committed to making peace with in service of a bright new year? If we go back to um, the workbook, we've got a couple of questions under the second energy of forgiveness. What are you holding on to that is not in harmony with the vision that you hold for yourself in the coming year? If you are calling in big, great love, what are you holding on to that's not in service of big, great love? Are you still angry at your ex because he's not coming through with child support? Are you angry at yourself for not hitting that financial goal or that fitness goal this year? Something has to die in the space of forgiveness. So what are you holding on to that's not in harmony of your vision? Similar question, but different. What are you committed to making peace with in service of walking in the direction of my vision? So not just like, not just what am I holding on to, but what am I committed to releasing so that I can take my next steps forward? Anything that's coming to you, just jot it down. It's beautiful. I love the stuff that's coming through the chat window. Somebody has a, a relationship with her dad and, um, you know, because they've made the choice to forgive. It's beautiful. What are you committed to releasing that no longer serves you? not just serves the vision, but serves you as a human being, as a divine, blessed, infinite soul. Great. I love it. <laughs> getting some gratitude coming in. You're skipping ahead, but no, it's kidding. I'm kidding. I'm getting some gratitude in the chat window that this idea of letting go of what's not working to make space for your ideal to come in is really hitting home. I'm so glad to hear that. So the next question, the follow along workbook is what is possible for you in your life if I release this and let go? What's possible if you release this? And again, I would love to hear some of the things that are coming up for you. Maybe if you feel safe and contained and held, Share with us what you're releasing. The invitation is also open to share what is possible. Releasing my unworthiness. Yes, you are so worthy. So worthy. Releasing is also a practice. Not a once and done. Forgiveness is a practice. I think it's actually Brené Brown that says forgiveness is a spiritual practice. Bam. I love that. Um, Releasing sadness, disappointment, true love is possible. Yes, what else is possible when we release these things? Hit me, hit me. What else is possible? In the, in the Facebook chat, what's possible? If you release this, lightness is possible. Thank you. Beautiful. Pure joy. I love it playfulness. Yes. All right. So we're going to bring a hand to the heart and we're going to say it again. Okay. We're going to take an exhale 
and inhale to prepare. Four lines of Ho'oponopono. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. One more time. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And now with your hand over your heart, stay there for a moment. I want you to say out loud, and again, don't worry, the lines are muted. I want you to say out loud, I am committed to releasing whatever it is in service of my vision. So I'm going to use that worthiness as an example. I am committed to releasing my unworthiness in service to my vision. Or if it's great love, say that. I am committed to releasing my unworthiness in service to my great love. I am committed to releasing in service of my vision. One more time, loud and proud. I am committed to releasing my unworthiness in service of my great vision, my great love, whatever that may be. Beautiful. Take a deep breath with me. <sighs> a little shake. <sighs> shake it out. That was a big one. I felt that. Okay. <sighs> All right, we're turning that corner. It's like it's like the solstice. We got to the darkest night, and now we got the return of the sun. Okay, I'm getting really silly. <laughs> All right, the third energy of Ho'oponopono is gratitude. Pow, 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 pow. And I love, I mean, gratitude. Talk about high vibration. We use the words thank you. And gratitude is the energy of abundance. Gratitude for all that is already existing in our physical reality, all that once was history, and all that is to come, all that we are calling in and creating and making space for, we have gratitude for, we cultivate gratitude for. When we focus on cultivating gratitude for that unknown, the unfolding, it works on a couple of levels. One of them is we're sending a message to the universe that it's happening. So I'm going to come back to my vision <laughs> or my whatever, my what I'm calling in. I'm calling in a wedding. Hell yeah. <laughs> and I can be so happy and grateful for this wedding. It isn't real yet. But when I say that in the present tense, I'm sending a message to the universe that I believe it's real. And also subconsciously, I'm tricking my little brain here to think that it's already happening because the brain, forgive me, I, I can't quote the science on this, but there's, there is, there's research and study behind speaking in the present tense and our, our brain not, not like our subconscious not being able to separate the past, the future and the now and so when we find gratitude for future things that we are creating, that are unfolding, it's, it's like planting a seed in our subconscious that it is happening, that it is real. Okay. I'm going to check in over here. Yes. Oh, you guys are so good. You're already in the chat window with what you're grateful for. Bring it. Because we've got my soulmate. I'm grateful for my soulmate. I'm grateful for the passion that I have for the horses that I work with. I am grateful for the insights and wisdoms and the knowings that the universe brings me. This is beautiful. What else? All right. Again, we're sending a message to the universe. We're also sending, planting that seed in our subconscious that it's happening. I love this line in another dimension. It already has, you know, I mean, get some, get some Elon Musk in your YouTube watch list. Right. And, and we're talking like, parallel dimensions and like parallel realities. I mean, whoa, I don't have evidence or proof of this, but like, boy, do I love to believe that in another dimension, this, this wedding of mine, this soulmate of yours has already come into physical form, has already like in your reality. Okay. So we can be grateful for something that has happened, something that is happening, something that is to come. We can also be grateful in. 
And that one's a little bit trickier. Being grateful for is what you see in your life today, the things, the results, the tangibles, what you can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. Being grateful in is, is kind of related to being grateful for what's coming, what's unfolding, what we're creating, but it's also being grateful for the unseen, being grateful for the present moment, but also being grateful for the uphill, being grateful for the challenges, ripe with hidden gifts and blessings that will only be revealed to us sometime down the line. Raise your hand or throw me some hearts over on Facebook if you've ever been in a situation that is uphill, it's effing hard, it's like, when is this going to end? And then like a year later, two years later, you're like, oh, it couldn't have happened more perfectly. Yeah. 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 Uh, raise your hand over there on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Hearts. Hearts. <laughs> All of you on Zoom are like, I know how to do hearts. If I were on Facebook, I would be hearting. Heart me. Okay. okay. Shameless plug. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. So grat having gratitude for, having gratitude in, all right? Um, the practice, let me get to the practice in a second. We have, yeah, no, the practice. In your follow along um, workbook, you have a space to write down at least 50 ways that you are grateful in this moment, in this solstice time, in this conclusion of a calendar year. You can start jotting down things in your notebook. You can start throwing things in the chat window. That's all good. And you're welcome to return to this practice at the end of the call. And when you get to 50, do a little happy dance and keep going. Because again, gratitude is the energy of abundance. And when we can be grateful for what is already on our plate, that is the message to the universe that says, cool, she gets more, he gets more. Great, let's do more, Let, great, here's more. But when we can't be grateful for what's already on our plate, why would, why would the universe even think that we have room to take on more? If we're you know, in that low vibration state of, or that, I like to call it the gravitational black hole of complaint. You know, it's so easy to talk about what hasn't happened yet. I was there this morning. It happens to me too. You know, and that's why I have my coaches and that's why I'm in my, my coaching programs and I have my mentors and my guides. I'm not a solo ship. You guys, I saw my therapist today. <laughs> okay. You know, at the same time though, I recognize that, that my life is a practice and the more I show up, the more I can cultivate gratitude, the more I can shift out of whatever gravitational black hole I'm in and come back to that high vibration, come back into that space of gratitude. Oh my God. Just a quick aside. I'm on the verge of like making this really huge, stretchy, uncomfortable decision. It's an incredible opportunity. At the same time, I'm like, you know, all twisted up about it because there's, it's, it's like a logistical jungle gym and on top of the incredible opportunity, it's also, you know, so there's always that question of how, yes, I want to do it. Yes. I've had that desire in my heart for a year. Yes. I've asked multiple people, how can I do this? How, you know, I've been hounded. And now that now the opportunity is there, I'm being invited, tapped on the shoulder pulled and my fear is pulling up that wall of like oh my god no I, how how am i going to do that you guys have been asking for this i've been asking for this for a year and 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 and, I, and, and the reason why i'm sharing that is because for me to shift into the gratitude that what i've asked for is now at my doorstep it pulls me out of the freak out. It pulls me out of the, how am I going to make this happen? Because if I lean into the desire and if I'm grateful that, the, that what I've asked for has shown up, the how, I swear it falls into place. And, and, and I, I mean, I got a check from an angel earlier this week. That's a whole other story. But like, 
you know, part of my freak out is around like the money piece, you know, because whatever it's, it's, it, it's on, you know, it's a part of my reality too. And I got a check from an angel, like out of blue, out of the blue, substantial. That's a whole, that's another story. But the reason why I'm sharing that is because the how is not our job. Like that check from out of nowhere, from someone who is no longer walking on this planet is my message from the divine that that how is, is taken care of. In another dimension, it is taken care of. So that's why gratitude, we come back to gratitude. Like, thank you for planting this desire in my heart. I am gonna lean into that desire and be so thankful that I, I feel enough to have desire, that, that I'm here on this planet, that I have two eyes and a mouth and I can speak and I can, you know, all of the gratitude. So we're gonna come together in a quick gratitude practice, hand over your heart, eyes closed. And this is call and response, so I will say a line and then I will give you a, a moment to repeat it. Again, the lines are muted, so feel free to speak out loud. Exhale all the air out. And inhale to prepare. Repeat after me, I am grateful for all that I have. I am grateful for where I've come from. I'm grateful for my roots and my history and for all the lessons I've learned. I honor my past and all that it's prepared me for today. And I'm grateful for my future and all that I'm creating and calling into my life. Two more rounds of Ho'oponopono. Exhale, inhale to prepare. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. Beautiful, come on back. So again, your practice at least 50 ways that you are grateful for, you are grateful in your life, okay? And the fourth energy of Ho'oponopono, try practicing saying it, this is a little tricky one to get, is love, love, and we use the words, I love you. And in this energy, we are expressing love for yourself, for your beloved, whether your beloved is in your physical reality now, or if your beloved is dreaming you up right now, we love, we're expressing love for your beloved. We're expressing love for the planet. We're expressing love for those who present challenges in our life. We're expressing love as well for those whom we wish well. And to center and cultivate this love, we are going to do a, 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 a love meditation. So we're going back into that place. Hand on your heart if you wish. Eyes closed. Another deep breath in. And an exhale out. And another big breath in. And an exhale Staying in that breath, that conscious breath. I want you to imagine a white light above you pouring down over you like white liquid gold, pouring down over your head and past your ears and shoulders. white liquid gold light sparkly 
Now imagine it coming down through the top of your head and entering into your being, this white radiant beaming light now filling not only the outside of your body but the inside of your body and moving down through your throat and into your heart center, filling your heart center with white beaming bright radiant light, filling the abdominal cavity, moving down through your legs, down to the feet and out through the toes. And now imagine that white beaming light bursting through your fingertips, bursting through your toes, beaming out of the crown of your head and out through the center of your heart. This white beaming light is the infinite love that you are capable of creating in your life. Our love is infinite. It's boundless. We have an endless supply of love in our life, in our heart, that we can turn inward towards ourself, that we can radiate out towards others. Now imagine beaming this white beaming radiant light. Imagine someone that you love near you Maybe they're standing next to you, holding your hand. Maybe it's a couple of people circling around you, loved ones, dear ones, past, present, future, loving you as much as you love them. And feel their white light beaming from their heart center out towards you. Now all of this radiant, sparkly white light is mixing and melding together, growing brighter and brighter from your heart center out through the fingers and toes, energy amplified, heart expanding outward. Now this white light moving beyond that circle of loved ones and out into the world. Shining down on your neighborhood, on your city. Beaming past state lines, past international lines, the international date line, the entire planet surrounded glowing, glittery, white light of love. Hold on to that vision for a moment. Hold on to that love. Whether you are calling in great love this year or something else, love is a part of whatever we are creating, whatever we are calling in. There must be love. Love for ourselves, love for those around us, love for our enemy. The Dalai Lama says that the Chinese government is his sacred friend. Our sacred friends are those that call us to a higher order of being, a higher consciousness of humanity. This love is the foundation of creation. Okay, you can come on back. And the practice for the fourth energy of Ho'oponopono is writing love letters. And in your follow along workbook, you have two essentially blank sheets. Again, you don't have to do this in your, in your workbook. You can do it in your notebook. You can also do it on a sheet of paper. And after this call, I invite you to write these love letters. You'll write two. The first love letter you will write to your beloved the one that you're calling in, the one that you are welcoming into your life, or the one that already exists in your life. Well, actually, that person already exists in your life. And remember, in another dimension, that person is already part of your physical space. But you're writing a love letter to your beloved. Okay. 
Okay, and then the second love letter is one to yourself. These letters can be long, they can be short, but I want you to write them with all the love and tenderness in your heart, with all the love and tenderness, with that bright, beautiful, beaming white light that we called in. As if you were writing a love letter to a small child, a dear one. Tenderness. And I have an example of a short love letter that I wrote to Nick about a month before we met. When I thought my whole life was falling apart. <laughs> it was a little bit after that and I just came back to the vision, came back to gratitude and I came back to the energy of my beloved and I wrote this to him and I wrote, I know you exist, sir. <laughs> I know you will come to me at the right time. I pray to be open to you and see you for who you are and love you with all that I have. Until then, may I be blessed with the experiences that draw me closer to and even more ready for you, my dear sir, my true love. That's what I wrote to Nick, and that was maybe a month, a month and a half before I met him. So write those love letters. And as a special bonus, there's a time machine component to this practice. So um, in your follow along workbook, um, and also right now here and here, there's an invitation to write that love letter to yourself and send it to me in a self-addressed stamped envelope. And I will tuck it in the Mexican vault and I will hold on to it until the most appropriate and divine time to send it back to you. You're not gonna know when it's coming. It's gonna show up right at the right time. And I am gonna drop this mailing address in the chat window. For those of you joining on Facebook, you can find the mailing address in the downloadable PDF. Oh, Mary, I think I just sent that to you only. <laughs> oh, and Mary's not in the meeting anymore. There we go, that's to everybody. There's a PO box number there. So you can write your love letter to yourself. I will also, um, well, this is also in the downloadable PDF. So if you're missing it on the screen, it is in the workbook. Write that love letter to yourself, send it to me, I'll tuck it in the vault. And you don't even have to think about it because it's gonna show up and you're gonna get love in your mailbox. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to come together one last time, repeating the, the four centered sentences of Ho'oponopono together. We're going to do it three times. Hand over heart, eyes closed if you wish. I have in my notes we're going to repeat it four times. We're only going to do it three. <laughs> Take an exhale and an inhale to prepare. Saying out loud with me three times, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. Beautiful. And I want you to know that you can use this anytime. I have brought myself out of the depths of the darkest night and into the brightest, most tearful, like resonant spiritual place with this practice. And I know that that is available to you too. Now we have one more piece tonight here. We have a calling in and that calling in is we've cleared this space, we've, we've cultivated the gratitude, we've sent love out to the entire planet, and now we've got this beautiful blank slate to call in. So in your, in your workbook, you'll see the question, what are the dreams you're pointing your energy on to manifest in the coming year? So anything that just comes to mind, jot it down quickly now. What are the dreams that you're pointing your energy on that you're going to create this year? 
And again, you can always come back to these questions after the call because I want you to go deeper. I want you to keep digging. I want you to keep dreaming. Remember, little ideas that tickle and nag are never to be ignored, for in them lie the seeds of destiny. So if there is a desire on your heart, I believe that desire is planted in us from the force that is greater than us, than the, the, the spirit that moves us. And it's our, I believe it's our job in life to follow those desires. I believe that that is what our soul work is to do, is to follow our desire. Okay, so we're going to get laser focused and take a moment to write down what will it look like when I have achieved this dream? When this, when this vision, with this, what I'm calling in, what I'm creating is now in my physical reality, is now part of the life that I can see, taste, hear, touch, and smell. What will that look like? What will it feel like? How will your life be different? Who do you have to be to attract this in? Or even better, what ways of being do you have to embody to make this dream, this great love, your reality? And I love the comments that are coming through the chat because I hear that we're creating a home, a beautiful home by the countryside. I believe that, uh, or I, I'm seeing that um, having this, my life will look different because it'll bring more energy. I'm seeing in the chat window, oh, it feels like lightness and joy. Gorgeous. Yeah, spending the, every day in the arms of my love, surrounded and filled with the joy of our children. Beautiful. How will your life be different? And then, and let me ask you this. So jump in the chat window again and over here on Facebook too, if you're still there. Um, who do, what ways of being do I need to embody in order to make this real, in order to call this in? I know for me, what ways of being, the things that I'm calling in for my year, Tenacity, patience, empathy, love, compassion. Those are ways of being that I get to have, I get to embody in order to create my reality for next year in the vision, under the, into the vision that I foresee it. Speaking my truth. Yes. <laughs> being content. Oh, yes. Hand in hand with gratitude, contentment. Beautiful. More laughter, less tears. Great. How do we cultivate more laughter? What do you get to do to create more laughter in your life? Energy and motion. I love it. Beautiful. All right. So, again, you can complete these questions following our call. And one more thing I'll leave you with tonight is that because tomorrow being the true solstice, I want to share with you some of the, the practices, some of the rituals that I do or like to do. Um, I don't do all of them every year, but you know, these are some of the, the things that you can do to stay in this spirit, to stay in this presence, this mindfulness, and this open space of infinite possibility. Okay. And one of them is, is greeting the sun as it rises, you know, because it's, it's the shortest day. It's the longest night. It is, you know, it's, it's the sun's briefest appearance. <laughs> so we can greet her as she rises or we can catch her as she sets or both. If you, um, you know, I mean, it's a short day, so you can, you can absolutely catch both. Um, you could write a poem or uh, focus on your content of release and renewal, create, create some words or some journaling around this, create, journaling around death on, on death and rebirth on that duality um, on letting go and calling in you can do some writing around this you can also make a list of blessings and loving thoughts for friends and family for yourself coworkers and anyone who comes to mind that you hold in your heart um, you can build an altar of nature's gifts like we've done tonight 
light a candle during the night, let it burn all night if, or, you know, one of those, uh, led candles that, you know, is safe to burn all night. One of these guys you can do that. You can also partake in a, in a conscious moment of silence. That could be five minutes, 10 minutes. It could be an hour. But I invite you to bring some kind of stillness, some kind of mindfulness to your day tomorrow, to your evening, to your morning, wherever it fits in, or all day long. All right. So tell me in the chat window, what's coming up for you? What would you love to do tomorrow? I see, I get to see the sunrise, sunset every day. When I, oh, when you feed your horses, some beautiful Colorado skies. I'm feeling that, Jennifer. I wake up and I see this bright orange glow out my window every morning. So gorgeous. Tomorrow is somebody's mom's 75th birthday. Happy birthday, mom. I love it. What else are we, what else comes up for you? What else are you inclined to do or called to do tomorrow? One or two shares in the chat. Sunrise over the ocean. Oh my God. How does it get any better than this? That's another game I play. Um, for another, I'll do that on a Facebook Live. Um, okay, so you guys, this amazing Eve, Solstice Eve. Oh good, more coming in. Sunrise over the ocean and the sunset, awesome. Um, right, the one where all my loved ones, past or present, are there to love and support you. Yeah, Mercedes, I would say like, you know, do that white light meditation and then, and then like send love, send gratitude, like just send all that energy outward. And you can do that through Ho'oponopono, or you can just focus on one of those energies, send it out. Good. Somebody's going to go for a walk. I love that. I will too. I'll join you. Fantastic. So we're going to do one last call and response just to seal the intention of the evening and bring our ritual to a close. All right, so again, if you feel called, hand over heart, eyes closed, or eyes open if you wish. And all lines are muted. Let me double check. And so you can feel safe to repeat out loud. And we're saying a call and response. I welcome with all of my being these transformations I set in motion tonight. And in all the nights ahead, I welcome the space for bright, beautiful blessings. Beautiful. One big last breath and an exhale. Beautiful. So you guys, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I do these calls several times throughout the year. And so I want you to just take a moment and feel into what you're feeling from this experience, right? I want you to notice what you're noticing. This is something, if you work with me, you know that I say that a lot. Notice what you're noticing. Just check in. I like to call it an emotional audit. What's coming up for you right now? And drop it in the chat window. Let me know. Let me know how you're feeling. Like maybe you feel loved or held, supported. Maybe you feel optimistic or hopeful, excited even. Just take a moment to scan what's coming up for you right now and share with me. Yeah, beautiful. I love it. Gratitude, gratitude, love, appreciation, calm, yes loved, hopeful, supported, and I want to feel this way all of the time. Holla! Amen. 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 All of it. Beautiful. Safety. You're always okay. Oh, yes. Expand, expand, expand. I feel more supported in trying to let the baggage of my past go. Yes. Your history does not dictate your destiny. It is a brilliant teacher. It is not an indication of what is to come. I feel more assurance. I feel self-assured. I, I feel peace. I feel peaceful. I feel somewhat pensive. My love, I want to talk with you offline. <laughs> I feel grateful, excellent, beautiful. So 
how long will this feeling last is my question, right? Because that's, that's the sticky bit, right? We join this call. We feel wonderful. We be, feel beautiful at peace, home, serenity. And then we wake up tomorrow and it's back to the grind. Or maybe we hold that feeling through the end of the week. Maybe even through the end of the year. There's a lot of bright, beautiful things happening right now. Maybe we, we hold this feeling through the end of the year. But the truth is, and I'm not trying to be a jerk about it, but the truth is, is that this feeling does wane. And, you know, I talked about that gravitational black hole. It's, it's real and it's palpable and it's heavy and it pulls us. So because we have this tendency to slip back into our old habits, our old beliefs, our old ways of being, going back to believing the critical thoughts about ourselves or others, going back to the baggage, believing that our history has any indication of what's to come. When we go back to that, then it's really difficult to be a change agent in our life. To, it's real, when we fall back into that, it's very difficult to keep moving forward. But you are the author of your own life. You get to choose when the pattern changes. You get to write the next chapter of your story. You get to write your love story. It exists, people. It happens. <laughs> I'm an like I'm evidence. You get to create the 2018 of your dreams. I, my friends, Queen of Mexico, am your biggest cheerleader and like your staunch supporter. And sometimes I want this life for you more than you want it for yourself. And I can't do that. You, and I can't say it enough, you know, like you get to create what you want. And I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying that it's not uncomfortable because <laughs> sometimes it is. But that stretch and that growth, who we become in that process is the real gem. The bonus is seeing the vision coming into our reality. And the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because I have an invitation. I have an application to get on a phone call with me. Because if you are calling in great love in your life and you've been coming up with the same results, you've been hitting the same wall, it is time to break through that pattern. It's time to make different decisions. It's time to train your brain to think differently. It's, train, it's time to tune your heart to the frequency of love. It's time to <laughs> tune your frequency differently. And I want to support you in doing that. So in the chat window here, <laughs> in the chat window, that's not the right link, you guys. Sorry, that's the link to the, the Zoom call. <laughs> I had it all queued up. It was, it was, it was going to be beautiful and it still is going to be beautiful. I will search for it in a moment, but I, I, I want to just land this point because I know that you're hungry for change. I know that you're hungry for, for ceremony, for ritual. I know that you're hungry to transform your life. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. Otherwise you wouldn't still be on the call. So thank you. I honor you for sharing this, this generous amount of time in service to your greatness. Okay. And Again, because you are hungry for change, I, I want to support you. You know, this is this is the time of giving. I am I am so fired up about being a change agent for you, being a cheerleader for you. I want to get on the phone with you. I want to hear what's going on in your love life, what's not going on in your love life, and I want to support you in offering a breakthrough. And that could be some coaching. It could be a mindset shift. It could be a book to read or an audio to listen to. It might even be an invitation to enter into a, a committed coaching relationship with me for a year. I don't know. I won't know until you tell me what you need. So I am going to go look for that link. I'm sorry. I did have it queued up. I'm going to drop that link in the chat window. Those of you on Facebook, it's going to show up after the recording is ended. It'll also show up in your inbox. And if you look there now, it might already be there. So the thing is, is that these applications, it's not about who gets the application in first. I really want you to be heartfelt and thorough when you fill it out. But I am going to be looking at them later tonight and first thing in the morning. And I do have a limited number of spaces. And I want to connect with the women that I'm, I'm confident that I can make a difference for. Especially if you're calling in great love, especially if you've been hitting the same roadblocks, especially if you're just so effing tired of like the same old, same old. 
like what and you're like up against that that wall that ceiling again let's break through you know and it's going to require something new of you new way of thinking a new way of being new decisions practice it's not a once and done but i'm going to support you in figuring out what are some of the things that you can begin to work on now to in service of that great vision okay so give me one more second i am going to go look for it now i did have it queued up and i think i um i did one of those things where i wrote over the i copy pasted too many times shower, honey. it's getting late it is getting late i totally hear you on that i'm going to mute everybody one more time um Thank you again for joining, for staying with me. Let me get this. Uh, man. I love it. I love the imperfection of all of it. It's just, it's beautiful. It's perfect and divine. Let me get that link. You guys, here it is. It's coming. Jeez. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. In the chat window, here it is. You've all been waiting for it. Drum roll, please. <laughs> there you go. That is the application to apply to book a call with me. We'll get on the phone. So I've got times on my calendar tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, Friday, kind of all day, and then Saturday morning. And again, I'll be reading your applications. I will be looking for the people that I, the women in particular, let's, let's be real. This is, you know, I love my men on the line. Thank you so much for being here. We honor the divine masculine in you. And right now my service, the, the, the people that I can help the most are my women, my women and calling in great love. And if that's you, if you're sick of hitting that wall and getting the same results and you are hungry to make this coming year different, if you are hungry to know who you're kissing on New Year's Eve, you're hungry to deactivate that online dating profile and text message all of your girlfriends, oh my God, I'm done, I found him. Then apply to book a call with me. <laughs> we'll kiki about your love life and I'll support you in breaking through, okay? So I'm gonna leave this, um, this up, I will drop it in the Heart Magnets group on Facebook. Also, if you're on my email list, if you've been getting my emails, you'll also have this link to apply in your inbox. So I'm so, so grateful again for your time, your focus, your energy, your attention, your, your energy, the everything that you brought, all of your, your fire, your flame, your release, your forgiveness, your gratitude, your love, all of it. I'm so grateful. And I will unmute the lines. I can see the gratitude coming in. Thank you. Thank you. I receive. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I can't wait to connect with you. I can't wait to see what you create in 2018. <laughs> and I can't wait to be part of that journey if you allow me. I'm so grateful and honored. It is a privilege, a privilege to be part of your life in this way. All right, unmuting the lines so we can all say goodbye. Mind yourself if you're on headphones, it might get loud, it might get a little reverby, but here we go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you. Happy solstice. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.